let's start with a look at the device's connections and controls, how to use the ready for use indicator, battery operation, and how to perform operational checks. The DFM100 connections and controls are carefully organized to facilitate ease of use. Color coded ports for monitoring cable connections are on the left CO2, SPO2, non invasive blood pressure, and ECG cables plug in here. A therapy port for external or internal paddles or multifunction electrode pads is on the other side. If you are using the DFM100 for transport or in high vibration environments, install the therapy cable collar that comes with your device. Operating controls and indicators are on the front. This is the ready for use indicator. The flashing hourglass tells you that the device passed its last self test and is ready for use with sufficient battery power for shock, pacing, and monitoring functions. The therapy knob is the on off switch. Just turn it to the desired mode of operation. The information on the color display is customized for each mode and its layout may vary depending on your device's installed options. In monitor mode, the display includes three wave sectors and a parameter area with related measurements. In manual and AED modes, the screen displays an enlarged wave sector 1 waveform. The DFM100 is configured to populate each wave sector with a predetermined waveform. Wave sector 1 will only contain an ECG waveform, which is used by the arrhythmia, heart rate, and AED analysis algorithms. It also includes the ECG calibration bar and rhythm label. Wave sectors 2 and 3 are automatically populated when parameter cables are connected. If the parameter source is the configured choice of a particular wave sector, it is displayed in that wave sector when available. All modes display general status information, including patient category, event timer that shows the elapsed time for the current event, date and time, and battery status. All modes, except pacing and AED, display paced status if selected. Technical alarms indicating an equipment issue appear here. Physiological alarm messages appear next to the patient related parameter they are associated with. This button switches between patient categories and changes alarm limits to the new patient category. The Lead Select button changes the ECG lead in Wave Sector 1, cycling through the available ECG waves and changing the displayed wave and its label. These controls are used for automated or manual defibrillation and synchronized cardioversion. This is the Alarms button. It pauses all audible physiological and technical alarms for the configured time interval. Pressing it during the pause interval returns alarms to their previous settings. Press the Mark Event button to insert a time stamped annotation on the ECG strip and in the Event Summary Report to note events as they occur, including certain drug administration. Press this button to display the Reports menu, where you can print either an Event Summary or Trends Report. Press the Print button for a continuous printout of the primary ECG and other selected waves with event annotations and measurements. Below the display, there are four soft key buttons that perform the function listed on the soft key label immediately above. The button labels change according to the function you are performing. This is the Smart Select knob. Press it and the main menu displays. Turn the knob clockwise or counterclockwise to scroll down or up a menu's list. Press it again to select that item. If you have a numeric selection window open, turning the knob clockwise increases the numerical value, while counterclockwise decreases the value. Press it again to select that value. To load a new roll of printer paper, open the printer door by pulling up on the latch. Remove the empty paper roll by pulling up on it. Place a new roll of printer paper into the paper well. Positioning the roll so that the end of the roll is on the bottom. 
Pull the end of the paper out past the paper roll and close the printer door. The top of the Officia DFM100 consists of a handle and the optional external paddles. The DFM100 paddle set can be used on adult, child, and infant patients. Both paddles have orange shock buttons that flash when the defibrillator is charged and the sternum paddle has a patient contact indicator that lights green once proper skin contact is made. Here on the back of the device is the battery compartment which houses a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. To install the battery, align the lithium-ion battery in the battery compartment with the arrow on the battery tab pointing up. Push up on this tab and insert the battery until you hear the battery latch click into place. Here is the AC power connection. Connect AC power to charge the battery. The USB data port allows you to save data for transferring patient information or to import configurations and new software revisions. On the front of the device, this LED indicates that AC power is connected and this indicator lights to tell you the battery is charging. This screen icon indicates the presence of a battery. As the battery drains, the icon displays incremental charge levels. An X in the icon indicates no battery. To assess operational performance and alert you if a problem exists, the DFM100 routinely performs automatic self-tests. The results of the tests are reported through the Ready for Use indicator and messages when you turn the device on. The blinking black hourglass symbol indicates the shock, pacing, and monitoring functions of the device are ready for use and sufficient battery power is available for device operation. A blinking red X and a periodic audio chirp indicate whether a low battery condition or no battery is installed and the device is running on AC power only. A blinking red X and without a periodic audio chirp indicates a low battery power condition but the battery is currently charging. The device can be used but its battery only operation time is limited. A solid red X and a periodic audio chirp indicate a failure has been detected that may prevent the delivery of defibrillation therapy, pacing, or ECG acquisition. A solid red X without a periodic audio chirp indicates either there is no power available or the device cannot power on. If, after power is supplied, the indicator reverts to the blinking black hourglass symbol, the device is ready for use. To supplement the automatic tests, you should perform shift checks and weekly shock tests or operational checks on the device. The American Heart Association recommends completing a shift check at the beginning of each change in personnel to help ensure that defibrillators are ready when needed. Philips provides a checklist to complete a shift check on the DFM100, including the ready-for-use indicator and related accessories and supplies. You must make sure that the DFM100 is not connected to a patient when performing an operational check. To perform the operational check, turn the therapy knob to monitor, then press the Smart Select knob. Using the knob, select Other, Operational Check, and Run Op Check. This message lets you know that you are exiting from all clinical functionality and entering a test mode. Select Yes to leave clinical mode. Then press the Smart Select knob to start the check. Be sure to connect all cables and accessories, as instructed on the display, prior to running the operational check. You will be prompted to set the therapy knob to 170 joules and then 150 joules. If everything is set up as expected, this series of tests will begin with a few interactions along the way. If not, you will be prompted to correct the setup, proceed with the test based on the current setup, or exit OpCheck. As each test is run, the message window In Progress displays. You are given a pass or fail indication upon completion of each test. When the OpCheck is done, a report is printed automatically, if configured. The first part of the report lists test results. The second part lists additional checks you should do to make sure that you have the necessary supplies and accessories and they are all in good working order. 
For details about these additional checks, consult the instructions for use.